Hi there, welcome back to ADSR Massive Tutorials. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, get yourself subscribed, youtube.com forward slash ADSR Tuts. And also click the button in the video to join the newsletter and get lots of free stuff for NI Massive, including 70 free sounds. So we're finishing off the modulators, modulating modulators feature we've been doing for this month. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a 32 step arpeggiator sequence but also use a performer and create a 32 step performer sequence. In the first video of this series we looked at how to do a 32 step arpeggiator sequence. We're going to take that technique one step further and apply a performer in there as well and use 32 steps of a performer So, and of course modulators, modulating modulators to achieve this result. So let's kick off with a new sound and just kind of get our sort of general kind of vibe together with this sound. So going to start off with a synharmonic wavetable, synharmonic 1 bring the wavetable position around so just before halfway and then change it to bend minus plus mode it's about a third of the way up and we're also going to pitch this oscillator up by one octave They're kind of like a, a sawtooth wave really now turn on oscillator 2 keep that as a square saw. So I've got quite a nice sort of thick tone. I'm just going to detune these oscillators a little bit as well to give us a sort of warm kind of chorusy effect. Okay, so the next thing we can do really is just move straight over to this first LFO slot and start setting up the first arpeggiator sequence. So convert this into a stepper going to sync this stepper and use this stepper to modulate the first well modulate the pitch of both of these oscillators and drop that crosshair click and drag that crosshair and drop it in the first pitch modulation slot on both these oscillators and click and drag up so we've got plus 12 semitones and plus 12 in that modulation box there so let's set up this first arpeggiator sequence with this obviously ratio synced to 1 over 16 and make sure you have this snap to grid function activated as well so we can get exact values in this stepper here. So we're going to go 0, plus 5, plus 8 for 2 steps, plus 10 for 5 steps, plus 3 for 4 steps, plus 2 for 2 steps. Plus eight on the 16th step. So now let's move to the second LFO slot here, and this is going to be our second arpeggiator sequence, or because we're creating a 32 step arpeggiator sequence, this is going to be steps 17 to 32, with this being steps 1 to 16. So click and drag the crosshair this second stepper, drop it in the second pitch modulation slot, both these oscillators. Click and drag up, so we've got plus 12 semitones amount of pitch modulation happening here. And let's turn the amp of this first arpeggiator stepper down for now, so that's off. And then let's turn the amp of this up, I'll keep the amp on full. Sync it again, 1 over 16, and this stepper that's set up. 0 plus 5 plus 8 for 2 steps, plus 3 for 4 steps. similar got a similar vibe to that first arp slightly different um, and of course using these 32 steps means we can get that variation uh, and more complex arpeggiator sequences going on and this is this final LFO here this is where it's all going to come together so in this first stepper slot <clears throat> let's keep the amp on zero of this stepper and what we're going to do is use an LFO to switch between the volume or the amp of these two steppers to give us those 32 steps so convert this LFO to a square wave move the x-fade curve all the way to the top so it's just this top wave what's applying what's being applied to this LFO 
sync this, go ratio 2 over 1, so it means we run through this cycle every two bars, and in this first stepper with the amp on zero, click and drag the crosshair of this LFO to the amp modulation box, click and drag up all the way around, and then in the second stepper, let's reverse that modulation, so amp is, sorry, amp is on full, and then click and drag this modulator here, this LFO, click and drag down. So what's happening now is if we play We've got these two steppers going on, these two arpeggiators, and this LFO is acting like a switch really, to switch between them at the end of every 16 steps. So, so what we can do now is set up a filter in this filter 1 slot, just route both of these oscillators to filter 1. Let's use a low pass 2. And what we can use on here is we can use a performer to modulate that cut off frequency to give us quite an interesting sort of vibe on the sound. So, you know, it gives us that sort of plucky kind of effect. So, just click and drag that crosshair of the performer, con convert it into a performer first from an LFO. Click and drag the crosshair over to the cut off frequency, click and drag up. So, we've got a bit of modulation happening in there. And what we can do now is set up two performer sequences in the top half and the bottom half of this kind of sequencer, of this performer, and then use the modulate this X phase sequence to flick between the two, the same way as we're flicking between the two steppers or arpeggiators here. So I'm going to just go through and just use the hit the low curve box and just start programming a bit of a performer sequence in the top half of this performer. Okay, and now let's move this S fade sequence to the bottom, program a slightly different performer sequence in the bottom half of this performer. And now, with these two slightly different performer sequences set up, what we can do is keep the X-Fade sequence at the bottom, click and drag the crosshair of this LFO over to the modulation slot on this X-Fade, click and drag up. So now, what we're going to have is this is going to switch between those two performer sequences. So the first half, we're going to get this top performer sequence, and then the second half, after 16 steps, it's going to flick to the bottom half of this performer sequence. <laughs> So we've got this quite complex rhythm or arpeggiator performer sequence happening and all we're doing at the moment is playing a sustained C3 note. So we can actually finish this sound off now, add some chorus, give us a little bit of kind of warmth and width to the sound and some sync delay, gives us quite a nice vibe and and a bit of vibrato as well actually. And then we could use a macro in this sidechain slot here to control the volume of this modulation amount happening on the cutoff frequency. gives us some scope for some automation on the sound. A 
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Any questions, please get in touch. Of course, make sure you get yourself over to our website, MassiveSynth.com. Tons more tutorials on there using Native Instruments Massive. And thanks for watching. All right, cheers. Bye.